Welcome back to Miss Shown Uncut with me, your host, Miss Joan. Back with some commentary. Uh, yeah, let's get right into it. I want to first thank all my new subscribers. Thank you so much. And definitely thank my day ones and my subscribers who, who's been in here throughout this entire journey so far. Uh, you could be anywhere on YouTube, but you choose for me to bring you content. So thank you. So as you can see by the title in that thumbnail, honey... Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that interview that Sean Davy Wade did with Sam Sr. Okay, so you know how we do over here. We do not participate. We only spectate in the drama. Okay, and we're going to jump right into it. So uh, over the weekend, Sean Davy Wade, shout out to Sean. He put out an interview where he interviews Sam Sr. If you're not sure who Sam Sr. is, this is an ex-husband um, or ex-baby daddy of Jaguar, right? And they do have a son together who is now grown. But uh, he did give Sean an interview where he just pretty much um, explained the process it, of what it was like to get his son back. Because if you know anything about Jag's story, poor child, Jag put that man through it. Even Tasha K interviewed him him and her family and his family and baby jag is a mess okay so we're gonna get into these notes this commentary and so pretty much the interview starts off you know they say hello to each other and sam senior pretty much um sean asked sam senior how junior was doing and he goes to say that you know their son is doing well right now he is currently working at a children's museum okay he is trying to get into the air force right uh because he has made attempts to get into the navy but he has been unable to get into the navy because of something jag did right we're going to get into that down the line so um pretty much sam uh senior ends up asking sean like how he was doing and he pretty much come out and sean goes yeah um he still hates Jag and he's serious about it, right? So before anyone wants to like jump down Sean's throat about saying that, let's be honest. If there are two people on this YouTube that has a right to make Jag life hell would be Sean Davey Way and Official Campaign, okay? If you was around, you witnessed it. They really liked Jag, okay? They really did. And she did them dirty as she does everyone. And then she pretty much smeared their name. And you may say, well, while she was locked up, while she was going through all that with Goomba, they were making her content. Well, let's be honest. Jag don't mind being content. Do not let it fool you. Jag do not mind being content. She makes it seem like people are stalking her, but the heifer don't mind it, okay? And so I kind of understood where Sean was coming from when he said what he said, because Jag really did them wrong. So the interview pretty much goes on to where um, Sean, um, Sam asked Sean, like, well, is Jag making your life difficult? Sean goes to pretty much say no. She's not. It's pretty much the opposite, that he's doing everything in his power to ruin Jag's life, okay? Or what's left of it, okay? And I was like, oh, I was like, well, that's his truth. He, he, he would know why he feel the way he feel, and I'm not mad at him for it, because I'm, I don't like Jag either, to be honest. So then Sean goes to say, you know, that Sam was really good to Jack and that he has he should have been left Jack at the time when they were together. Well, Sam comes to say, well, he agrees. You know, the only reason why he stayed with Jack at the time when they were together is because she had told him she was pregnant with Sam Jr. And because he came out of a two family household, right? He wanted to try to make it work for the son. 
but he realized now you know that he should have left but then he goes to say even when he did finally make the decision to leave it was and, and break up it, it was still bad between them right and that's honey that's when we just get into just a a, a rabbit hole of just my lord okay my lord so then he goes to explain that when they had broke up what started everything with the issue with him getting the custody of his son was jack ended up telling the court that sam senior abused her right allegedly abused her and he said that he never you know what i'm saying put his hands on her and he said even sometime in that relationship he realized it got to a point where he realized it was either going to be him or jack Honey, when you know you get to the point where you ready to harm somebody or they're going to have to take you out because you're going to try to take them out, it is time to leave, okay? And he pretty much was saying he couldn't picture himself harming any woman. So that's when I guess he knew it was time for him to go. So then Sam goes on to say, you know, explaining how the custody battle went because of what she said, that false allegation that he um, assaulted her right the judge seen this and what the judge ended up doing is making him uh sam was only able to have supervised visitation right and this was something i believe this was like every other weekend and so because of that he ended up having to go back to court to prove that he did not you know assault jaguar and that even jag's old family which we are aware of testified against her and so once that all happened, the judge pretty much gave them, I guess, joint custody, split custody, shared custody, however you want to put it. But it's with a stipulation that they both had to see a therapist. Well, we learned that Sam went to go see this therapist, but Jag didn't. So every time he said he would contact Jag, Jag would end up telling him he's just, she's just way too busy to go to the therapist. So because of this, right? He took the advantage of Jag not following the court order and he was able to get the order with the supervised visitation pretty much altered or like removed. And so once he went to the judge and provided this information, right, he went from getting his son Sam Jr. every other weekend to every weekend. And then once he had that order changed, he took it to the child support people and pretty much had a new order and his words was he was able to get Jack out of his pocket, right? So then this interview goes on to where Sean pretty much asked like, do they have, did they have joint custody? He goes to say yes. Whew, child, it, I'm telling you, just, just hold on, it gets there. So then he goes to say that, you know, at this time, everything was working out right. Once they had the joint custody, you know, he was able to get his son. Jack was in a new relationship. And this guy that she was with, you know, had a daughter. And he would get his daughter on the weekend. So when Jack would get Sam Jr. on the weekend, I guess these two would play. And what happened was Jack ended up not wanting Sam Jr. to leave. Because, you know, wanted him to stay to have you know, I guess to play with this little girl that only remind you that only came on the weekends. So when Sam senior would go to pick up his son, Jag would pretty much make it impossible. Like he couldn't get him. So when he start realizing that Jag was not giving back their son, when he would come pick him up on the weekends, he was supposed to have him right he ended up having to file a police report right and then he goes to say that in the state of pennsylvania at the time they do not remove a child out of a household without like actual evidence that that child needs to be removed out of that household so he said he went to court honey he went oh, child listen to this listen to this okay when he went to court the next time he had over 54 to 55 police reports that he racked up in a year, meaning he went through a year basically not able to see his son, right? And I'm like, my God, you, you know how much time it takes to go to a police station every weekend, every other weekend to get police reports? Whew, I, I, it's good to have it, child. It's good to have the evidence. Hmm. So then the conversation goes on to a like, well, once the judge got this information, right, he went ahead and modified the order. So now what the judge is doing at the time, he says, well, let, let's do this. 
We'll have to order Will. You will drop Sam Jr. off at school and you will pick him up at school. That way it was supposed to guarantee him that he would be able to see his son, right? So he says everything was going fine. You know, picking him up, he was seeing his son. Then Jack meets a man, another man child, <laughs> meets another man in Louisiana, and his name was Stead Roy Child. Stead. Okay. Oops, excuse me. And um, she ends up taking their son over state lines, which, you know, without the permission, she could not do due to the court order. So he said once Jag did that, he had to track them down. He had to track down Jag and track down um, his son. And so once he finally, I guess, tracked him down in Louisiana, he, I guess he informed this guy, Stedman, oh Lord, not Stedman, Stedroyd, child, Stedroyd, <laughs> that, uh, what was going on. And he ended up kicking Jackie out of the house child with the son. Okay. And because of this, he tracked, he, uh, kicked them out. Jackie and her son was pretty much like sleeping on people's floors and sleeping at different places at all times. So I guess when Sam Sr. went back to the court about this, Jag did not put up a fight. Mm -mm, she didn't, which was smart at that time. She didn't put up a fight due to her circumstances. So the court did agree that the son would live with Sam in Chicago because Sam now got promoted and his job moved him to Chicago. So he was trying to get, you know, the court to get uh, Sam Jr. to move with him to Chicago. So in the interview, Sean didn't ask, you know, was this all before she kidnapped him for the summer? I was like, Lord have mercy. You How do you kidnap your own damn child? Well, we going to look, look, listen. You going to see how you can kidnap your own damn child. Okay. So then the interview goes on to where Sam then says he had to go to court. He had to go to court to prove that they were no longer in Philly, right? That he lived in Chicago so that he can get primary custody. And that this is not new. Like he's been to court a few times with Jack over their son. Right. So the deal was with the court order was now he would have him over the school year and Jack would get the son on the summer and some holidays. The only stipulation he requested is that Jack and her mother pay, right, pay for the the fees for the son to get back and forth from Chicago to Philly. So then it goes on, right, um, where jack ends up violating the order again child again okay and because of this <laughs> she would not send him back to chicago from philly right so he had to file another police report to prevent and um to prevent a truancy officer from arresting him because he wasn't going to school well long and behold thank god for that police report because the truancy officer did come to try to arrest sam um senior but because of that police report he filed the fact that jag would not send him back he did not get arrested right and so um pretty much they end up being able to get Jag on child abduction, child, child abduction, your own child. Mm hmm. Yeah. So what happened was because Jag just would not cooperate, Sam ended up reaching out in the D.A., honey, the district attorney ended up reaching out to Jag and pretty much like, hey, you have to send your son back. But Jag ends up telling the D.A., this is from Sam's mouth. Fuck you. Okay, I'm not sending him back. He's not going back to him. That's what Jag said to the DA. So the DA turned around and got the uh, the judge to issue to issue, excuse me, a governor's warrant with an extradition, pretty much for the violation of the order. Right. So now they're about the extraditor. So once the DA was able to get this governor warrant. Um, I believe he says the Chicago police commissioner reached out to the Philadelphia police commissioner, right, for the extradition. And because Jack was getting ready to face trial and they knew they were about to arrest her. And he even went to say that they had to get the U.S. Marshals involved and the NEC, NICMEC, NECMEC. NCMEC, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it stands for the National Center Missing and Exploited Children 
child yeah that deep that deep that's crazy u.s marshal Whew. and they were gonna have to forcibly remove him from the house right so but then he was told look sam was told you have one day to get to philly okay because once we go the next day to arrest her if no one is there to get your son, he's getting put into the foster home. So after he got off, off of work that day, he flew right into Philly and pretty much, okay. He said he got to Philly, he went to the police, they wouldn't help him. He said, hey, contact your commissioner. The commissioner said, yeah, he has this order. And so the police went, got Sam Jr. and they locked Jag ass up, child. Okay, he was, she was arrested on the spot again mm -hmm. so then right um jack was um she had to do time in jail right and she was given probation but because sam singer kind of felt like mm, she did her time this is the, the mother of my child she, he asked the judge to pretty much you know shorten her time and he says now that he looks back on it he should not have done it you shouldn't have and i wouldn't have okay because ain't no way ain't no way <laughs> all right so then it goes on to where now down the line right jag now moves to dallas with her mom right and she sends him back um for i guess that year you know everything was good but then the next following year again jag stops sending sam jr back to her his father who is now living in chicago and jack is in dallas right so Jag end up getting an attorney. Jag and her mom end up getting an attorney, right? And it's a TV judge, I guess a popular TV judge down in Texas. And you could just hear how he's explaining his story. Like he's pretty much tired of reliving this. And I do not blame him because honey, just listening to it and putting these notes down was a lot. Okay, you see I'm going through them because I'm trying not to make this too long. So then um, Sam does go to say that his godfather ended up giving him some advice that he should pretty much represent himself. And so what Sam did, he decided to going forward, every case he had, he went pro se, right? So he decided to rep represent himself every time he had to go to court for Jack, right? He did the reading, he did all the research and it clearly worked out because he end up getting his son but let's not go too far so now right they get to court in dallas and all of a sudden sam says he's handed these documents where he is being requested to he has to pay jag jaguar right support and he's like the fact that i have full custody and the fact that i am financially reliable and i pay more than 80 percent of like taking care of him with that order you do that's the whole point you don't have to pay for support so jag did not get that support child she tried it though she tried it mm -hmm. she did she did as per usual and so then um now what sam says is before though before he went down to dallas he did inform chicago right that jack was hasn't returned him back to school all that time which was a violation to her probation and what they end up doing is they end up getting another governor's warrant right and another governor issue warrant to arrest her so they end up flying down to dallas child the popo and they arrested jag in court mm -hmm. they got her ass again in court and they arrested her in the courtroom so now that jag is locked up again right um he realized that Jag mom was using all the money she had to pay for this attorney, right? But was not able to pay for their rent, which ended up causing them to get kicked out. Even though Sam was asking the judge to please, you know, put an order where she would had to forcibly, I guess, pay the rent because I guess the mother was putting the money into the attorney, I guess, to, for Jag. They end up getting kicked out. This is the second time that they got kicked out with that child at the time he was little and you know what <laughs> lord have mercy mm. right so at the time they get kicked out jag is you know extradited back to chicago for violating that order and she's in cook county jail no wonder her ass thinks she's tough okay because that that bitch been in cook county Whew, lord <laughs> So then Sam goes on to say, you know, it was rough for a while because he had to keep flying back and forth between Chicago and Dallas. But then he ended up having another court date, right? Child, this is when it gets messy. 
Jack ends up putting Sam Jr. into a hospital, right, saying that he had issues. And then they end up evaluating him, releasing him. But before they released him, they released him with a diagnosis of depression, right, which caused to this day Sam Jr. feels some type of way about. And you're going to see why. You're going to see why. Right. So um, due to Jack putting him in the hospital, right, the courts... Um, put him in a hospital to get him out but before they was going to release Sam Jr. back to senior they end up telling him hey you got to get you a psychiatrist and a psych psycholog uh, psychologist and a psychiatrist child you have to get them he has to see them so you know at that time he's just looking like damn like why well, I gotta do all that to get my son but he do you know he followed what he was supposed to do but then Sean does ask like, do he believe that Jack put the son in the hospital in a way to pretty much sabotage him getting him? And he says, of course, that's exactly why Jack put him in the hospital, because she felt that it would stop him from getting their son. Right. But it didn't work. And so at this time, his job, I guess his job moved him again or he ended up working in Pennsylvania. He go he goes to Pennsylvania. Now he's no longer in Chicago. He finds a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Right. But they end up telling him they want to speak to him and Jag. So what happens is they end up calling um, They end up talking to Jag while she's in jail. And she ends up telling this psychologist that Sam Jr. is schizophrenic. And Sam says, that is not true, right? So because when, you know, he got released from the hospital in, in Dallas, he had, Sam Sr. had no paperwork to prove whether he was diagnosed with schizophrenia or not. So the psychologist had to put it in the paperwork. He had to put in the paperwork that Jack said that he was schizophrenic and that the hospital told her that he was schizophrenic, right? Now, this is where it comes into like how her actions in the past have affected his life in the future. So due to that report, that the lie that Jack told this psychologist, when Sam Jr. went to apply for the Navy, he qualified for the exam you have to take in, to get into the Navy. But they do ask you in that process, have you ever been hospitalized? And once they see anything related to schizophrenia, you're disqualified. Honey, let me tell you what Jack did. Jack prevented that young man from getting a $75,000 sign on bonus in the Navy. I repeat, I repeat a 75 K bonus from joining the Navy. His words, not mine. If he got the number right at him, not me, but I was like, damn, damn and that's to this day why sam jr have an issue with jag because what she did to him in that hospital he really wanted to go into the navy right so this is why now sam jr is trying for the air force because they are they aren't as strict as the navy right and at this time as he's trying to get into the air force he is going through an independent psychological exam to prove whether he's schizophrenic or not and sam senior says he's not so he's going to pass so he's not worried about that right so then it comes out that jag later put um um Jack does get out of jail, right? And when she gets out of jail, she goes to court. But by this time, Sam Senior already has full custody, honey. Like, it's a wrap. It's a done. They went ahead and just gave him full custody of their son. So then Sean does ask, like, well, you know, since then, you know, since, you know, lately, have you heard from Jack or have Sam Jr. heard from Jack? Sam Senior goes to say, no, he don't believe his son has heard from her. I think maybe in the last maybe a month or two ago these are his words he said maybe one or two months ago he heard and then he does mention you know that around new year's um jack did reach out to sam jr to ask to see her but he denied he he declined to want to see her so sam um sean sorry sean goes to ask sam you know, have you at any point told your son that he could not speak to Jack? And he goes, no. If anything, he encourages him to speak to Jack because you only get one mother, right? And because of that, no matter what, you know, she go through or they go through, that is still his mother. So he do kind of like encourages him to reach out to his mom. 
And so then Sam Sr. goes to say that, you know, he told him he's grown. He can choose. He can pick whichever parent he want to deal with. But he does tell him, now, look, you're a grown man and you could go either way. Right. But if you go the way of your mother, I can't support that. Right. Listen, when a person puts you through hell mentally, you will do everything possibly to avoid dealing with them, okay? Because you're not going to put yourself through that. And I don't believe him. But as we can see, Sam Jr. clearly chose his father, which was the smart thing to do, right? So then Sam goes to say that, you know, at the time, you know, he wasn't doing well in college and he's just trying to get him back on track. That's why he's getting into the Air Force because he feels like, you know, the Air Force will help him get back in track, get refocused. Also, you know, the service will pay for you to go to school. So this will really like help him and give him the structure in the future, I really think, because all my friends that that's in the military is doing very well for themselves financially and beautiful homes and everything. So then pretty much um sean goes to ask um that pretty much you know jack's retaliation and everything she put him through like have it affected him sam jr and he he pretty much just says like yeah but you know he's doing well so then he does ask like, well, what was Jack's relationship with her son, Giovanni? Giovanni is the son that is now deceased, rest in peace. And he pretty much scuffs like, huh. and I was like, oh, child, what he about to say, okay? He goes to say that, you know, Giovanni is the per one of the people in her family who testified against Jack. And that is the reason why Sam Sr. was able to get back their son because he testified. And then he pretty much says that, you know, he did ask Giovanni to move with him to Pennsylvania before passing, right? And that it will only require him to go to school. Once he finished school, he can get his record expunged and he can pretty much start a new life. But he goes to say that Giovanni didn't want that. He pretty much, you know, he was a man. He wanted to figure it out on his own. So then Sam goes to say that he remembered Giovanni telling him that he couldn't stand Jag, that he did not like the things that she did. And Jag pretty much disowned him. Now, if you know anything, Jag disowned Giovanni because Giovanni testified against her in the court to get about her brother. And I think that is just you a shitty mother and then you're going to get mad at your oldest son for wanting to protect the baby boy from you. Child. And y'all wonder why we why nobody like Jag. Mm hmm. So then Sam pretty much does this like really deep sigh. And this is, it was just so sad. It was like so freaking sad. He goes to say it was a tough situation, right? Because Jag did not raise Giovanni, right? She was too busy either in the streets or on the road. His words, not mine. Okay. And then goes to say that Jag pretty much left him with his, with her mom and father. So they raised him. And... um. The reason why he never did adopt Giovanni was because he, the, the agony, his words, the agony that Jack put him through, he just couldn't imagine having to go through it twice for, for two kids. He was already going through hell for the son they had together, but to try to fight for Giovanni, he felt like it would have just been too much and he would not have been able to handle it or he wouldn't have made it, you know, and I don't blame him. And he said, um, pretty much he does partially blame himself you know, he feels as though because he allowed Jag behavior to dictate his actions, he probably could have done more for Giovanni. And Sean does jump in to say, you know, it's not your fault. And Jag family have always said Giovanni looked at you as like a father figure and that you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't blame yourself for what happened to Giovanni. You had nothing to do with that. But then Sam does goes to say that, you know, he understands it, but it does cross his mind at times, you know, that it could what a difference it could have made and he would probably still be here but he's not and it's nothing he can do and you could just tell he does like he carries some guilt you can hear it like please listen to it it's over on coffee like it was really sad like by the end of that interview i wanted to tear up because it was just for somebody to put someone through that and like no accountability whatsoever of the shit they do in people's lives it's crazy to me right so then sam goes to tell Sean you know hey try not to let Jag stress you out and he says this because Sam tells Sean I can hear that she's still a bit antagonized that he's still a bit antagonized by Jag and Sean agrees and he laughs but he agrees he's like yeah I'm yeah you're right like 
Jag did them wrong. They really like Jag. I guess it's true what AT2 said because you know they deal with Jag on a more personal level that she has a way with people, right? So what I'm thinking is she she had a way with them and they really thought that she was somebody like a friend. Yeah, they made content off of her, but come on, she gave them the content. She purposely went to them so they can have the content. She would tell them to do it. But what I think is they just was not expecting Jag to flip on them the way they did, like the way she did, right? So pretty much the interview is coming to an end and Sam pretty much states that he prayed for Jag, that she turns her life around, but he believes that each day she doesn't, she gets worse. I agree, wholeheartedly, <laughs> I agree. And the interview pretty much ends with Sam picking up a lady friend child. And I guess they were going to a Cat Williams, the Cat Williams tour. And you could hear her get in the car. I was like, I know that's right, Sam. I know that's right. And she sounded like a very nice lady. And so the interview pretty much ends there. And um, my just overall output is it was a very sad interview. It was a good interview. Even though, yes, we may have heard these things before, when you hear him tell it, it just gives a different type of just understanding to this. Because if you look at Jag now, right, every time she enters somebody's life, she causes all this turmoil. And now that you hear someone who actually dealt with her for like years, who have a kid with her, and the in the trauma they left behind because you can hear it when he talk honey please go over to sean support sean watch it is it's only about four dollars you only have to pay one time and you can listen to the interview for yourself because me telling you is not going to give you the idea of what it's like hearing him tell you okay it's a lot okay you you get there and you're just like whoa that's a lot it was heavy and so Jack is just, and, and, and people want to say we 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 hate her, you know, we talk about her, we're obsessed about her, we talk about her. No, there are some of us who literally see the shit she do, see the trauma and the damage that she causes on people, and we're speaking out on it. Yes, I might clown her. Yes, I might crack some jokes. Okay, I'm making it soft because clearly being serious with her and really trying to come at her doesn't work. The lady is supposed to be on medication, y'all. Right. And I want to bring some to y'all attention before I go. Remember how when Jack was with Goomba and she was pretty much saying Goomba was schizophrenic, was going around telling everybody that Goomba was schizophrenic. Does it sound familiar? She did it to her son. When Jack is done, I call her as a Venus fly trap, honey. When she is done dealing with the man she dealing with now. Y'all know, right? Y'all know she gonna bash that man, say he was all kind of predators and everything. I'm telling you, most of us know what's getting ready to go down, okay? But, you know, we the haters. Let them tell it. We the stalkers. We are obsessed with Jack. No, this interview gives you a deep dive in why people feel the way they feel about Jaguar, right? Jag is way more disliked than y'all know. You know, a lot of people stay in the clouds. They don't drop down. But Jag is way more dislike on YouTube than you know, child. And all that, everybody in Jag life love her. Honey, Jag don't got that many people in her life. Yeah, there's some people who probably deal with her because they don't, they didn't have to deal with her on a constant basis. Right? But imagine someone who's in her. Look what she did to Legina, DJ Genesis. Look what she did to Goomba. Look what she did to motherfucking uh, TJ. Granted, they dealt with her. They had the shit coming. But if you're not aware of the abuse, because Jaguar right is abusive. You do not have to be physically abusive to be considered abusive. She is mentally and emotionally abusive to people. And when people are done with her, they go live a regular normal life and you never really hear from them too much because the trauma she left behind. But, you know, don't take my word for it. Y'all keep on supporting the crazy lady. When her ass actually go get some damn help, I stop making content about her. If Jag was actually out here doing positive things, I would have no choice but to make positive content about her. I don't get a kick out of here kicking this lady back in, but I'm damn sure not going to sit here and just think this shit is okay. And I'm going to keep calling her out on it, period. And I don't care how anybody feel about it. 
because I'm not going to sit back and watch this lady. Now, y'all want to fuck with her? Fuck with her. But I'm going to do my part. A lot of pictures and all. Okay. Well, if you made it to the end, you a real one. I thank you so much for sticking it out with me. Please leave a comment below. Subscribe and like, please. Let me know below. Did y'all see this interview? Are you aware of all the turmoil Jack has caused the people? Do you understand why some of us advocate for the victims and bring it to people's attention that this lady is not healthy? If you do, let me know. You know how we do over here. Thank you so much for dropping in and smooches. Yeah.